Animation refers to the process of imparting motion to images. The cartoons that many of us grew up with involved cell animation. Cell animation requires the drawing of a figure in various stages of motion. These images are then transferred to film frame by frame, and when played back at normal speed, give the illusion of motion. Computer animation is similar, except that the computer recreates the figure or model in its stages of motion. Much of the artist's labor of redrawing a figure for each motion is replaced by a computer command. Computer animation can be either two-dimensional or three-dimensional. The requirements for creating three-dimensional animation are radically different from 2D work, much as a statue differs from a painting. The first step required in any animation process is the construction of the model. Demonstrative evidence generally requires a high degree of accuracy. A variety of sources can be used by the artist to obtain input necessary to construct an accurate model. Architectural blueprints, engineering specifications, and medical texts are common sources. Some input can be electronically grabbed through a camera and fed directly into the computer. This digitized image can then be used as a basis for modeling. The creation of a 2D model may require simply cleaning up the digitized image and properly coloring it. Creating a 3D model may require the extrusion of the 2D image or the incorporation of digitized images from other perspectives. Once the model has been created, the next step is to produce the motion path. 3D animation, key positions consisting of points of reference on an XYZ axis are designated. The operator then inputs the amount of time required for the model to travel from the initial reference point to the final point. The computer can then generate the images between each reference point that, when transferred to tape and played back, provide the illusion of motion. There are two primary factors that affect the cost of computer animation. The first is the complexity of the model. As the complexity of a model increases, so does the time required by the artist to create it. A more complex model also increases the amount of time the computer requires to generate each frame in the motion path. The second factor affecting cost is the length of the animation sequence. Longer animation sequences require more computer time to produce the necessary frames. There are many applications for computer animation in the courtroom. One of the most common uses is accident reconstruction. Video can be effectively used in conjunction with animation. This video was created to show how a plaintiff fell three times and injured his back. The subject on camera is a stuntman. He is performing the falls in front of a blue background. This blue background is then matted out and replaced with a photograph of the service truck he was exiting immediately prior to his fall. This matting process is identical to that used by television weathermen. Once the accident had been demonstrated, the next step was to demonstrate the nature of the injury, in this case, a herniated disc. Sufficient time was allowed on the tape for the plaintiff's medical expert to describe this injury. The last aspect of this sequence was to reveal why the stuntman was not injured in recreating the accident. Computer animation also lends itself to vehicular collisions. In this example, the models were left in their wire frame mode. Note the change in viewer perspective. Computer animation can be produced from a driver's view, a bystander's view, a bird's eye view, or a worm's eye view. This fully rendered animation sequence illustrates the path of a three-wheeler in a near-fatal single vehicle accident. Two-dimensional animation can also be used to illustrate accidents. 
This sequence was created to show the diving path of both a poor diver and a world-class diver to help the jury understand the plaintiff's negligence of design issue. A two-dimensional illustration of the spine was used to explain the resulting quadriplegic. Animation can also be useful in accidents not involving personal injury. This animation supported a litigant's contention of how a fire spread. Animation was also used to cast doubt on the logic of their opponent's theory. The flames were created in real time through a color cycling process. This is similar to the process used by TV weathermen in showing air currents. Animation can also be created to help juries understand complicated procedures. Medical processes can also be explained, as in this angioplasty procedure. Animation can also be used to introduce the jury to various parts of the body. Where hard copy is necessary, poster size exhibits can be produced from any frame of an animation sequence. The only limitations on the role of computer animation in simplifying complex issues for the jury are the lawyer's imagination and the rules of evidence. Kannada Communications Corporation also offers video production services to complement its computer animation capabilities. Day in the Lives and various demonstrations can all be brought to the courtroom in the broadcast quality Betacam format. This is the same format used by virtually every television news team in the country. Where a longer videotape format is desired, Kanata Communications offers production in the new Super VHS format. Super VHS offers the maximum quality available in a portable two-hour format. No other facility in Houston offers attorneys the full range of services available at Kanata Communications Corporation. Kanata's specialization in serving the needs of the legal community can be traced to its founder and president. Whether your case calls for computer animation, poster size exhibits, for video production, there is only one company you need to call. We invite you to join our list of satisfied customers from the legal profession.